we're diving into Objective 1.2, comparing and contrasting accessories and connectivity options for mobile devices. Mobile devices are hubs of activity, so let's explore how they talk to other gadgets and how we enhance their functionality. First up, connection methods. Think of these as the pathways data travels to and from your mobile device. We'll start with wired connections. The most common is USB or universal serial bus. It's like the Swiss army knife of connectors. You've seen older types like mini USB and micro USB. They were popular, but a bit fiddly. And the USB type A is that familiar rectangular plug you find on computers. But the star of the show now is USB-C. Imagine a super versatile reversible connector. That's USB-C. It has 24 pins, can be plugged in any way up, and supports everything from basic data transfer and charging to high-speed video like DisplayPort and HDMI and even Thunderbolt. It's much faster and more powerful than older USB types. Then there's Apple's Lightning Connector, found on many iPhones and iPads. It's an 8-pin proprietary plug, also reversible like USB-C. When it came out, it offered higher power for faster charging than the USB standard of its time. So, comparing them, USB-C is becoming the universal standard, offering broad compatibility and high performance. Lightning is Apple-specific, also user-friendly, but locks you into their ecosystem. The big trend is towards USB-C for almost everything. Now, for wireless connections, NFC or near-field communication is like a secret handshake between devices. It works over a very short distance, think just a few centimeters, to transfer small bits of data. It's perfect for payment systems, tap to pay, access control, like an ID badge on your phone, or quickly sharing a contact card. Bluetooth is your go-to for a personal area network, or PAN. It connects devices over a short distance, but a bit further than NFC, and handles more data. Think wireless headsets, keyboards, mice, or even tethering your phone for internet. Comparing these, NFC is for quick, tiny data swaps at close range. Bluetooth is for more sustained connections with peripherals at a slightly longer range. And speaking of tethering or creating a hotspot, this turns your phone into a mini Wi-Fi router, sharing its internet connection. If it's for multiple users, it's a hotspot. If it's just your laptop connecting to your phone, that's tethering. This can be done via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or even a USB cable. Next, let's look at accessories that boost your mobile device's capabilities. For input accessories, while fingers work, a stylus offers precision. Think of it as a smart pen for your tablet or phone, often connecting via Bluetooth, offering pressure sensitivity, and sometimes buttons. Remember, compatibility is key, an Apple Pencil for an iPad, for example. Most laptops have a built-in trackpad, that touch-sensitive area for mouse control. External trackpads also exist, connecting via Bluetooth, and they often support cool multi-finger gestures. Some laptops let you disable the trackpad with a function key to avoid accidental clicks while typing. A drawing pad is an external digitizer, like giving your desktop or laptop the precision touch of a tablet screen using its own stylus. These connect via USB or Bluetooth and are great for artists. And don't forget track points, those little rubber nubs on some laptop keyboards that also control the cursor. So a stylus gives pen-like precision Trackpads offer convenient cursor control, and drawing pads bring artistic capabilities to non-touchscreen computers. For audio accessories, headsets are common for hands-free calls. Wired headsets might connect via USB, the older analog TRR's connector, that 3.5mm headphone jack with tip, ring, ring, sleeve for mic and audio, or a lightning connector for Apple devices. Wireless headsets, usually Bluetooth, offer freedom but need charging. Speakers, especially external wireless ones, give you much better sound than tiny built-in phone speakers. They're usually portable, battery-powered, and connect via Bluetooth. So, wired headsets offer plug-and-play reliability, while wireless offers convenience. External speakers are all about better audio on the go. And visual accessories. Your device probably has a built-in camera or webcam, but for better quality, or if your desktop lacks one, external webcams are great, usually connecting via USB. These are essential for video conferencing. Finally, let's talk about expanding laptop connectivity, especially when moving between a desk setup and being on the go. A docking station 
is like a central hub for your laptop. You plug your monitor, keyboard, mouse, network cable, and power into the dock. Then you just connect your laptop to the dock with one cable, or by physically placing it on the dock. It's super convenient and often adds extra ports or even slots for full-size adapter cards. Think of it as a permanent home base for your laptop's peripherals. A port replicator is similar but usually smaller, more portable, and connects via USB. It adds common ports like USB, HDMI, card readers, but doesn't typically offer the extensive expansion of a docking station. It's like a travel-sized multi-tool for your laptop's ports. Comparing them, docking stations are more feature-rich and less portable, designed for a fixed desk. Port replicators are lightweight and great for adding essential ports on the move. And that's a whirlwind tour of mobile device accessories and connectivity for Objective 1.2. The key is understanding what each does, how it connects, and its main advantages or differences compared to similar options. Join us for the next A Plus Core 1 objective. Thanks for watching Tech Vault Academy.